Hello folks, welcome to this series of AWS services. Till now we have been looking on various AWS services provided to us. Services for compute, services for storage, services for databases and so on and so forth. So AWS provides you a whole range of services. Some of the services are of infrastructure type, some of them are of platform type and some of them are like application integration services. Now you can use all these services to develop and host your applications. But the first question that appears is that which service is there for which component of your application. To understand that better, we are taking an example of web application. So think about it that you want to create a web application. When I say web application, it could be simply your website or it could be some application hosted on some centralized server and you are procuring some services to the clients who are connecting to you using internet. So these kind of applications are called web applications. So let's first understand that what are the components of your web application. Now this part could be obvious to few people who are web application developers or who are aware of this ecosystem. But if you are a beginner, you need to know that what are the actual components in a web application and how they are interrelated to each other. So in this particular video, we are just going to talk about these components and what are the AWS services that you can use to fulfill the requirement of those web application components. So let's see what are the, what is the first thing that you need to create your own web application. One of the major thing is you have to first purchase a particular domain name on which you want to attract your client base. Once you purchase your domain from domain registrars, you need to put that setting into your DNS settings, which is domain name service settings. Normally domain registrars also provide you an account where you can put your DNS settings like A records, mail records, C name records, etc. Then you will be concentrating on your code. In your code, there again can be further multiple components. One of the component could be your front end side, the user interface side, where you will be using something like HTML, CSS, jQuery, etc. Then there would be a back end, which we often call application, where you implement your business logic. Now in most of the cases, if you are creating a, something like a dynamic web application, then you would be using some databases in the backend. These databases could be used for doing transactions. You can use them to store something like a client session information and so on and so forth. So basically you'll be using data models and you'll be working with those database services. When you create your web application, you might also have some static content. Static content may include something like media files, images, some text, etc., videos, etc. So you need some storage space to keep this kind of static content. Now even when your website is ready or your web application is ready, you need to deliver the content to the end user. And if you want to enhance the performance of the web application, then simply hosting your content on a particular web server is not enough because your clients may be globally dispersed. And if you want to procure your content from just one web server, your users may not get as good performance as you want to give them. So to enhance user experience, you might want some kind of content delivery network, which would mean that your data is not hosted on a just a single server, but it is hosted at least temporarily on multiple server across the globe. So that part is basically called content delivery network. While creating the application, you might need some more allied services for your user authorization, for the security purposes, for communication purposes, and so on. Now you also want to have your website highly available. Highly available means even if your web servers or some application servers go down, it should not affect your end client. So you should be able to recover it from a down state and meanwhile there should not be any downtime for your end user. If you can create a system like that, then that kind of system is called highly available system. Now when you are working with a large client base, you might be hosting the same application across multiple servers or across multiple web servers. And when you are doing that, you might want some component in your whole uh, web system which can distribute the traffic across these multiple web servers or multiple application servers. So you might need some kind of load balancing service as well. To further enhance your user experience, you might want to send the user request in a very specific way. 
So suppose you are getting some user request for your website from a client in US and you have got your application hosted in India as well as in US regions. Now you might want to route the traffic of that user request towards your US region. So this kind of routing decision has to be made so that you can give the best experience to your end user. And that is why you might need some kind of routing policies at various stages in preparing your web application. So these are the various components which are needed. Now it's not of course an exhaustive list but it is just an indicative list that these kind of services you may require while creating a web application. Now let's go and see that what are the AWS services available which you can use to support these various components of a web application. So we'll start with the domain name and DNS setting. For this kind of service there is a service called Route 53 from AWS. Using Route 53, AWS also works as a domain registrar. So you can purchase a domain name directly from AWS and you can do all the settings on your cloud itself. Route 53 also has a capability to route user requests. So you can create various kind of routing policies using which you can reroute the user request across the regions as well. We'll see all those things when we go and cover the Route 53 service. A limited amount of routing within a region can also be done by your load balancers. For allied services, for example, for sending the notification, sending emails, providing proper user authorization, etc., you've got multiple services. Again, this list is not exhaustive ones, but you've got SNS for notification, you've got SES, simple email service for working with emails, you've got identity and access management module for your user authorization and user authentication parts. For working with data models, you've got various kind of databases, relational databases you have, which again gives you multiple options to choose from. So you've got RDS, you've got in-memory data stores in form of Elastic Cache, you've got NoSQL database like DynamoDB. So based on what kind of database you want, you can get all of it from AWS. For implementing your business logic or hosting your code, which could be the business logic or as well as could be a front-end code, you've got your EC2 instances. The EC2 instances can be used as a web server or they can be used as an application servers, depending on what kind of code and what kind of services you are running on those EC2 instances. To implement complex applications where multiple components are talking to each other, you might use other services like simple queue service, you can also use simple workflow, SWF and so many other application integration services you can use. To make your systems highly available as we discussed, you can further use services like Route 53, you can use auto scaling, you can use load balancer and in fact you can use all these three together to make your system robust for any failure. So you can do disaster recovery, you can do properly backup etc. And you can do dynamically scale up, scale down, scale out, scale in, depending on what is the need of the R. To make your systems highly available, you have to host your application on multiple web servers and multiple application servers. Then the next challenge comes in that how do you divide the traffic across those multiple web servers and application servers. That is where your load balancers come into the picture. So you've got multiple type of load balancer, you've got classic load balancer, application load balancer, network load balancers. Using these kind of load balancer, you can divide the traffic across multiple servers as well as multiple applications and even to multiple containers. For storing static content, you can use S3 storage, you can use EBS volumes, you can use Elastic File Services, EFS, and in fact, all these services can also be used for taking snapshots, for taking the backup of your servers and making in turn your web application more robust. For content delivery network, AWS provides us CloudFront which uses multiple edge location, edge cache, etc. and provides us multiple features using this CloudFront web service. To write your code, to maintain your code and to properly compile, test and deploy, you've got multiple developer tools. For example, you've got code commit, code build, code pipeline, etc. to help you change your application code and properly deploy it on your EC2 instances. So even when your web application is properly hosted and all, properly deployed and all, and it is working fine, you still need to monitor it. Monitoring is needed to enhance again the user experience, to make you ready for any future failure, and to take corrective actions as well as preventive actions. So monitoring and troubleshooting are very very important part of your web application to keep the show on. And for monitoring, you again have got various services like CloudWatch, you've got CloudTrail, you've got VPC flow logs, 
and similar other services. So please remember that whatever we are talking about here, the component of the web application as well as the services that we are using here, this is still keeping in perspective that that's a very basic services we are talking about here. Now AWS also provides you advanced web services, for example, Elastic Beanstalk, Opsworks, LightSail and so many other which you can use instead of these web services that we are talking about here. But here since we are beginning to understand now AWS services, I'm still taking the conservative approach to create a web application. So a normal web application has three tiers. Three tiers include first the web tier, then application tier and then your data tier. So to visualize basically that what services are being used where, I'm taking this example. So basically when your client clicks on a particular link, your Route 53 will come into the action because Route 53 is the service which is taking care of your DNS settings and your DNS records. So the user will be hitting on the link and that will initiate a request and the request will come to the Route 53. Route 53 will appropriately choose the route and will redirect it to a particular region. Then that will go to something like a internet facing load balancer. The load balancer then will appropriately select an EC2 instance where your web server is basically running. So multiple web servers will make a web layer. Normally they are also launched using auto scaling group. So your auto scaling group basically will come here in the action for launching a group of web servers. Then if needed the web servers will forward your request to your application servers. Now application servers are again running on EC2 instances. They might be running on different availability zones and by using an auto scaling group. So the concept of high availability can be maintained. If the nature of the user request is so that it has to fetch some data from the databases, then the user request is forwarded to some kind of databases. This database could be a SQL type database or could be no SQL database or it could be a in-memory data store basically based on what your application is doing. So your web servers are running on the first tier which is web tier, application servers are running on application tier and your databases are running on your data tier. And all these tiers are connected to something like your load balancer which is redistributing the traffic at each layer. Now to take the backup of your running web servers and application servers, you might be using the concept of AMIs, creating images and maybe storing it on some S3 bucket. S3 bucket here may also hold your static content which is being accessed by your web servers or your application servers. S3 bucket can also be used for storing various kind of snapshots so that if there is some failure or some database or application servers need to be restored, it can use the snapshot kept in S3 bucket and start running in a usual way. Now to deliver your content, you might want to use CloudFront service here. And this architecture here, the whole thing, all the AWS web services that you are using here, if you want to keep it more secure, you need to create your own VPC and you can manage the route tables, the network access control lists, the gateways, etc. by your own. So that is where your VPC and other networking components come into the picture. Now here we are talking about just one region. The same kind of architecture can be created in another region itself. So if you've got a global reach, your web application is reaching to multiple continent across the world, then you might want to go and implement the same thing into different regions as well. This would enhance again the user experiences, it will minimize the latency and you can customize your web application for different people coming from different geographical regions. Now again it's just a very high level view of your web application. There are so many other services that can be used but this particular picture sets the tone for the next few videos that we'll be using and it will help us identify exactly what service you are using to serve what purpose. So the relevance of the AWS services that we are going to discuss now will be clear for going forward. So keep this architecture in mind when we are going to learn about load balancer, when we are going to learn about auto scaling, databases and so on and so forth. We will keep referring to this particular architecture as our three tier web architecture and going forward I'll keep on taking the example of hosting a three tier web application. So please keep this architecture in mind while referring to the next videos. So that's all we have here for this video. See you soon in the next video. Thank you for watching.